Yes. Carrying the same amount of weight for the same amount of distance, but you're doing walk, run, do you burn more or less calories? Uh, it, it ends up, in the few experts that I've asked about this, being about the same. Uh, because you're running a little faster on the run segment. So it ends up being about the same. Uh, it's certainly not any dramatic difference. But where the difference comes in people who want to uh, lose uh, weight is that they're not beaten up at the end and they can do more afterwards. And they often do because they feel so good at the end. Is there any particular nutritional issue that you wanted to be addressed? Okay, uh, I wanted to have uh, full disclosure here. I am against puking. I, I really am. Uh, and sadly, a lot of people get advice from a wide range of folks, and it's bad advice. Uh, so let me tell you what tends to uh, to be the key. First of all, it takes about 36 hours for food that you have eaten to be digested, metabolized, delivered to an area to be used, and then be available for you. So you're not going to get the benefit of that huge meal the night before. And too much loading the day before can lead to unloading during the event itself. <laughs> so you want to pick foods that are going to be digested easily and you want to test them out. And what I suggest to my clients is that the day before long runs, they journal what they're eating and they fine tune it through the training season and come up with a list of things that has never caused any problems. You also want to drink about eight, eight ounce glasses of water the day before, just throughout the whole day, the day before. Um, and so there's not any food that's gonna make you run faster uh, on race day, and quite the contrary. Uh, let's, let's fast forward to the morning before a long run or a race. And uh, I recommend, as soon as you wake up, to drink a glass of water, or my preference is a cup of coffee. And then, that's it until you start. Because the more you drink leading up to the start of your run, the more potty stops you're gonna have to take. Uh, and then, most folks I've worked with that have had digestive problems have found that they don't need to eat anything before the run. But if you do, for any reason, or just want to, pick something you know is going to digest easily. And the only way you know how to do that is to test out various foods. A uh, little secret, dry toast has never caused anybody that I've talked to any problems. Uh, and then if your blood sugar level is low right before a workout, Within the last 30 minutes before is a generally safe time to avoid an insulin roller coaster. You can even eat uh, a little sugar snack of 100 calories or less and usually have no uh, insulin rebound from that. Uh, but be very careful, journal it, and come up with a plan, follow a plan on race day. Okay, during long runs, there are two substances that are of benefit. Uh, one is water, and the other one is sugar. Now, uh, there's not much blood flow that goes to the gut when you run, so very little is going to be digested. So you will never be able to uh, replace the fluids that you're losing, especially here in Tallahassee. But if you try to do that, you can, you, you can induce a serious condition called hyponatremia. So the recommendation, based on the research, is every two miles, two to four ounces of water and 30 to 40 calories of sugar. The sugar is for the brain. Your brain's only fuel is blood glucose, and you will use some of that up as you're running long distances. The good news is you can prop it back up again by taking sugar. Now, the problem with the gels and, and so forth, uh, and even sports drinks, is that they're hard to digest. 
because there's just not much blood flow down there and the substances are hard to digest while you're running. And they cause a lot of uh, nausea and puking. And you know how I feel about that and I don't want it. And particularly if you're running next to me, I don't like it. <laughs> so the key is to find sugar sources that can be absorbed quickly like sugar cubes, gummy bears, lifesavers. They work like a charm. I use the same uh, sugar uh, booster and fluid, actually, that I used when I was running at the World Class level. It's Defiz Coca Cola, and I take uh, a sip or two every mile or two. It's wonderful. And I'm not sponsored by Coca Cola. I wish I were. Uh, started out running halves, ran half But I'm wondering, just bring, give me your brain suggestions on how to wrap my brain around, you know, doubling that mileage again, going back to those goals. Well, first of all, realize that if you're pushing up your mileage, you can walk the whole distance of it. And this really diffuses the stress because you're faced with this run. You remember how bad you used to feel when you were mostly running it. Uh, I'm just going to walk this. That really takes that stress away. But in reality, you're probably going to want to run some of the long runs. And so having these short running segments followed by walking is the way to avoid the duress that you have been going through. You'll get some of it, but just very, very little of it compared with what you've gotten in the past. Were you using run, walk, run before from the beginning? What were you using? 90, 30. Yeah, well, that was too much. Uh, what pace per mile did you end up with at the end? Yeah, that's either a 30, 30, 20, 20, or 15, 15. And there, there's just a whole world of difference in how you feel based on 90, 30. Now, I, I wouldn't even think these days of running 90 seconds and walking 30. 15, 15, or 20, 20, try it. You are the captain of your running ship, so you can determine how much flexibility you have. If you need to take a sip of water and you have just taken a walk break and all of a sudden there's a water station, definitely take it. And the bottom line is that if you take these walk breaks even a little more often than you should in the beginning, you're going to tend to have even more resiliency at the end. What would be your strategy for um, transitioning from multiple half marathons but wanting to improve a 5K pace? You can do both at the same time. However, if you're racing every single one of your half marathons, it becomes problematic because you're tired in between. So one hard half marathon a month, and you can still run another one really easy. What if my goal was just to improve my 5K pace? If you just want to improve your 5K pace, it still would be helpful to run a long run of at least 10 miles every other week. And 12 actually is a little bit better than that. Running this super slow. And then uh, doing the speed work for the, uh, for the 5K is done every single week. And the reason there is, just as Barb said, lactic acid becomes a problem in distance running. In shorter distances like the 5K, you will have to deal with lactic acid buildup in order to run faster. And you teach yourself how to do that and how to cope with it by running these speed workouts every single week. The speed work for the marathon and the half marathon is actually done on alternate weekends with the long run. So you run long one weekend and then you do half mile repeats for the half marathon or full mile repeats for the marathon. And just to give you a little glimpse into that world, we have found that um, 
Building up to 14 of those by the end of the season has been a deal maker for people that couldn't quite qualify for Boston or 14 times one mile for the marathon speed work and 14 times half mile for the uh, half marathon if you have a time goal. But this is only for those that have time goals. But you don't have to do the speed work for the half and the full every week. It can be done every second week and then every third week at the end of the program. But the, the 5K and 10K speed work really does need to be done once uh, a week. And uh, uh, just a little secret that we just made a decision on, uh, we are going to hold, we uh, Galloway folks are going to hold a really fast 5K and 10K on Memorial Day Sunday this year in Atlanta. And uh, the reason it's fast is if you're in a hilly city like Atlanta, and y'all have hills here too, you can, if you really look hard, you can find a downhill course. So we have a course that starts at a much higher elevation, and it finishes down in Piedmont Park, a nice low elevation, and it's a good chance to improve that 5K or 10K time. Yes, I'll come over to you. Used to be a TV show Phil Donahue who would come in. Well, there's a lot of individual differences. Um, we, uh, at our Galloway programs, have a registered dietitian, and she actually is our daughter-in-law, Carissa Galloway. Um, but she comes to um, our retreats that we do in Carmel, and I've learned an awful lot from her in this whole area. First of all, you do need carbohydrates for reloading purposes and also during long runs and, and during the race too to keep your blood sugar level up. Now, you don't need much of it. 30 to 40 calories every two miles during the race. Now, the reloading is important for two reasons. You've got a half hour window to reload the muscle glycogen that you burned up. And if you don't reload, then two negative things happen. The next time you work out, you're going to feel like you're running almost on end. You're just not going to have as much pizzazz. But secondly, if you don't reload, muscle glycogen is your brain's reserve fuel. And it monitors that. And if you don't reload within half an hour, then the brain pushes the hunger button. Not until the evening, or all the next day, or all the next week, but that's why you tend to get hungry after workouts. So, 100 calorie reload in carbohydrates, if it's within half an hour, if it's four miles or less, if it's 13 miles or more, it's 300 calories. So it's not many calories, but that's where the simple carbohydrates come in for benefit, just strategically, within 30 minutes. Uh, now, in terms of general nutrition, if you're losing weight, and uh, are you sort of sick of her saying that, you know, how, how can I keep eating and eating and eating? Then you just need to, the uh, uh, best way is to use one of the apps, like my fitness pal. Most people who use my fitness pal use it to lose weight, but you can lose it, you can use it in order to maintain weight or gain weight. So just go there, see what the calories are, and maintain what you need to. And you can set that up so that the uh, app will tell you if you're behind or ahead. Anything else? Well, thank you so much for coming. I
most of my running life, which now is over 60 years that I've been running, started running in 1958, but most of my running life has been spent trying to figure out why do we feel so good about ourselves when we run? Why, if we start out fatigued, do we have more energy after the run? And why does running empower us as individuals to take on challenges that normally we would not take on? Well, it's because of the brain circuits that are turned on. And these were not really discovered until the 1990s when safe brain scanning devices were developed. And what they show is that running turns on the circuits for a better attitude, better than anything else that's ever been studied. Turns on the circuits for vitality better than any other activity in life that's been studied. And it turns on the empowerment circuit too. So keep running, keep that brain going. Jeffgalloway.com and it'll hit the virtual and it'll run you through. 